This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. When we think about the COVID-19 vaccine hesitancy in the black community, let's remember it didn't happen by chance. It's justified in history. But the will to change the narrative is strong today, and our people are lending their voices to the conversation. We're sharing our stories and the reasons that made us choose the vaccine so we can lead the way for others to make a well-informed choice, too. To hear our stories, visit hereforuswa.org. $20 million, $19 million, $6 million. These are all awards recovered for clients of Phillips Law Firm. To win big, you have to fight big. And Phillips Law has been fighting the too-big-to-fail insurance industry for decades. Not every case will have a multi-million dollar outcome, but Phillips Law will fight just as hard to recover the outcome you deserve. If you or a loved one has been injured in a car accident or on the job, call or click today at 1-800-JUSTICE or visit justiceforyou.com. What's up? It's your boy, the Ben Smith. Thanks for listening to the Men's Room Daily Podcast. Want more? Check out the greatest podcast in all the land, The Podcast. Be sure to subscribe and listen to a brand new episode every Tuesday night. Somebody out there deserves to be recognized. And the men's room knows just who it is. So to you, we say, bottoms up, sailor. You're the toast of our shot of the day. Drink time it is, and as usual, we head to the drink desk and Stephen Throwhill to find out who we're toasting. Yes, indeed, and today we chose 67-year-old Alan Slattery of Hastings, East Sussex, England. Hang on. There we go. Now, Alan is a bank robber, but he's a bank robber with really terrible handwriting, which normally would not matter unless you are one of these bank robbers that chooses to give bank tellers... Notes. Yes, hey. That was my part. Yeah. And inevitably, his bad handwriting led to his downfall. See, he entered a bank. He handed the teller a threatening note demanding cash. But due to his crappy handwriting, the teller couldn't actually read the threats or the demands. So after some awkward silence of staring at each other, he just left. But then a little bit later, with the help of the staff, they managed to actually read what the note said. And seriously, I saw a picture of the note. I could not read it, but this is apparently what the note says. It says, your screen won't stop what I've got. Just hand over the 10s and 20s. Think about the other customers. All right? So oh, that's the threat he's applying as a gun. Whatever. So at that point, they call the cops, but this dude was long gone because they were more joking around trying to read this guy's terrible handwriting. Mm -hmm. Well, the cops showed up and said, well, there's not much we can do. Do you, do you have closed circuit TV? They said, well, we sure do. So they look at the closed circuit TV, and they said, that's the guy. And said, all right, well, again. There's not much we can do. But then, a few hours later, police received a call from a different bank. They go to that bank. The guy is gone again, but they reviewed the video footage, and there was the same guy. But as they watched the video footage, it also showed him getting on a bus. Turns out, in England, if you have a bus pass, your picture and your name is on the bus pass. So they called the bus company and said, oh, yeah, that's, uh, that's Alan Slattery. Here's his, uh, here's his address. That led police to his house, where he was promptly arrested. Damn. Okay. First timer. First time. Actually, apparently he has hit three banks in two weeks and only successfully got money from one. But the one he got money from successfully is the one where he got arrested. Okay. Yeah. So we pour this booze and we drink this booze because we think it's yummy. 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 So over the tongue and down the throat to party in our tummies. Down the hola, bitch hola. The Men's Room presents Profile This. And Stephen Throwhill, could you please tell everyone how Profile This is played? A short game, Miles. It's a simple game where we share with you a real-life news story, something that happened right here on planet Earth. Earth, 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 Earth. And as you listen to the story, based on the stereotypes you believe to be true of people and the decisions that people make, we'll ask you what it is you think makes the story a story. Hello, Peyton. Welcome to The Men's Room. Liquor and whores. Liquor, Liquor and whores. All right, Peyton, do you understand how this here game is played? I do. Fantastic. Then you know you have your choice of one of three stories. We have the wonderful world of drugs. We have bite me. In other words, what did someone find in their food? And finally, interior decorating, where you guess the foreign object that ended up on the inside of someone. Thrill, you pick. You want me to pick? That's right, so every guy has. You got here. You know what? We're going to go with a little interior decorating. Right? I don't even know why I acted like I was thinking about that. Of course I'm going to go interior Well, we decorating. had Bite Me the last two days. We did have Bite Me and the last two days. drugs is probably days. the most popular category. So. Sure. So, you know, let's let's go a little uh, 
This is not quite the butt, unless you want to call it the front butt. But in the United Kingdom, there's a television show on BBC Three called Bizarre ER. And essentially, doctors share some of the more bizarre and or surprising medical situations they've dealt with, like the name suggests. And a woman at the center of this story certainly earned being featured. Now, like many embarrassed women and men before her, she showed up at the ER complaining of abdominal pain, which is all too often code for, quote, I put something on one of my no-nos and now I can't get it out. And that was, in fact, the case with her. Now, in this case, the woman had inserted something into her vagina, but was unable to remove it once it was placed there. Now, luckily, the medical procedure to remove the object was fairly simple and it was successful. She was treated with antibiotics and she was sent home. That's all we've got. But the question is, what was in her vagina that she put in voluntarily but could not retrieve? Was it a Yankee candle, a mango, an instant coffee jar, or a rolled up poster of Donny Osmond? Um... Man, I don't even know. Um, Miles, what do you think? Well, is the second choice Yankee Candles number one? Mango. Mangoes. I'm going to go mango. How old was she? It does not say. Old enough to know better. Yeah, I'm with Miles. I'm thinking it's mango. Also sounds like a I, beach bar. Mangoes. I'm sure there's a thousand of them. In North Carolina alone. Right. I'm sure it's got to be one in Maryland. I think an instant coffee jar is too big. Or maybe it's not. But I just don't see how you couldn't get it out. I just feel like... It depends on the size of the jar. It depends on the size of her vagina. I don't know. I mean, like, there's yeah. those smaller jars of instant coffee. There's bigger ones. I don't, I don't and know. And everyone who does that, it's Marie Osmond poster, so... And it doesn't say what kind of Yankee candle, right? It's like one of those three wicks or something crazy. Oh, Jesus, man. Well, well, I see where your head is. I mean, look, it could look, have been. Peyton Yankee know. candle is feasible. Yeah, I'm going to go Yankee Candle because girls like candles. Screw it. Okay, all right. She really likes Final answer. We're going to find out what doctors removed. Was it a Yankee Candle, a mango, an instant coffee jar, or a poster of Donny Osmond? Next. That was a tease. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. $20 million, $19 million, $6 million. These are all awards recovered for clients of Phillips Law Firm. To win big, you have to fight big. And Phillips Law has been fighting the too-big-to-fail insurance industry for decades. Not every case will have a multi-million dollar outcome, but Phillips Law will fight just as hard to recover the outcome you deserve. If you or a loved one has been injured in a car accident or on the job, call or click today at 1-800-JUSTICE or visit justiceforyou.com. GEICO asks, how would you love a chance to save some money on insurance? Of course you would. And when it comes to great rates on insurance, GEICO can help. Like with insurance for your car, truck, motorcycle, boat, and RV. Even help with homeowners' or renters' coverage. Plus, add an easy-to-use mobile app, available 24-hour roadside assistance, and more, and GEICO is an easy choice. Switch today and see all the ways you could save. It's easy. Simply go to GEICO.com or contact your local agent today. Start summer up by mixing things up with top paint and stain brands at Lowe's. Shop HGTV Home by Sherwin-Williams, Valspar, Cabot to find the perfect pop of color or classic shade you've been looking for. And don't forget to prep your deck for the season with reliable wood stain and sealer. Now's the perfect time to complete your paint or stain project. Lowe's. All things summer, all at the right price. The Men's Room returns with Miles and Thrill. 99.9 KISW. Categories Interior decorating on profile. This uh, TV show in England uh, called is it, uh, Bizarre ER. Was it the name of it? Bizarre ER. That's yeah. correct. Woman uh, went to uh, the hospital with abdominal pain after she admitted to inserting something in her vagina. The object was successfully removed. Question is, what did she stick up there that uh, brought on the abdominal pain? Was it a Yankee candle, a mango, an instant coffee jar, or a poster of Donny Osmond? And Peyton, that is the very question that we posed you. Very serious question, in fact. And you went with the Yankee candle, which to me makes the most sense. However, no, she did not put a Yankee candle into her vagina, which in some ways, that's a good thing. And then we have the Ted Smith and our very own Miles Montgomery. 
Both agreed on the mango. You heard the mango juice said, oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. no. It's the coffee jar. It was a rolled up poster of Donny Osmond. Oh, come on. Get out of here. How did, it, how did it even work and not bend? It was a rolled up poster of Donny Osmond. Obviously, it did bend at some point inside of her, which led to the complications. Again, the name of the show is Bizarre. ER. Mm. A roll. I guess you're right. And keep in mind, here's the thing Sounds about like Donnie found the spot. <laughs> Jesus. Who has a poster of Donny Osmond in the 21st century? He left his residency in Vegas for a residency in the UK. <laughs> yeah. I mean, now, I guess. Donny Osmond. I, mean, I don't know. I mean, he was famous. I didn't know him, but. He was famous when we were growing yeah. up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in the seventies. This woman, obviously, she's got some. Look, going man, on Donnie and Marie still had that marquee in Vegas. Like they are as popular today as they were then. But she is still as a poster. That's amazing. In her vagina. Now for all TV news all the time, it's time for TV Time with Ted. And now, because your pathetic life is confined to countless hours in front of a talking box, the men's room presents TV Time with Ted. Ah. All right, your choices today. Seth Myers. Seth Myers. The Jimmies. Okay. But. That would be David Spade. On no. It's not. Today, that's what I'm saying, but. But you have Sarah Silverman in for Jimmy oh. Kimmel. Okay. Yeah, or Ted Smith. Is it Ted or is it late night? It is right there to sign all these guys have talented teams of writers that help them come up with their monologues each and every night. It is up to you to determine, is this an actual late night joke and from whom or could it be a The Ted Smith original? The first ever cruise ship with a roller coaster just set sail from Florida. Really? A roller coaster? You're already taking a cruise from Florida during a pandemic. How much more danger do you need? Sarah Silver. Uh, Jimmy Fallon. Jim Fallon. It's the first ever cruise ship with a roller coaster just set sail from Florida. <laughs> a roller coaster. Really? You're already taking a cruise from Florida <laughs> during a pandemic. How much more danger do you need? A member of the USA paintball team was kicked off the team after a video of her fat shaming a 16-year-old boy showed up online. And related news, we have a USA paintball team. Seth Myers. Ted Smith. Ted Smith! Yeah. Pepsi announced a new partnership with the brewers of Sam Adams Beer to create an alcoholic version of Mountain Dew. And if that sounds good to you... Don't worry about what's in the vaccine. <laughs> Seth Meyers. Yeah, Seth Meyers. Yes, Seth. Pepsi announced a new partnership with the brewers of Sam Adams Beer to create an alcoholic version of Mountain Dew. And if that sounds good to you, don't worry about what's in the vaccine. <laughs> Southwest, American, and Delta Airlines will not require employees to be vaccinated. And an odd twist, Frontier now, Frontier Airlines is now the classy airline. Fallon. Yeah, that's fine. Southwest American and Delta Airlines will not require employees to be vaccinated. It's an odd twist. Frontier is now the classy airline. Uh, so you might remember years for years, uh, Sarah Silverman and Jimmy Kimmel dated. Yes. yes. And everybody loved it because people like, you know, it was like a cute couple, two comedians together, this and that. That's what I mean. So they broke up. Obviously, they have stayed somewhat friendly. She shows yeah. up as a guest on uh, his show and this and that. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that's whatever. The things happen. But that was just one that it seemed like everybody agreed they liked that couple. So people were, oh, were bummed out. But Jimmy Jimmy has kids now, this and that. Sarah Silverman has a giant career. So I think they're both mm -hmm. fine. I like when she came on the show and she said, uh, she's like, you know, I, I got fat, you know, frat boy Jimmy. You know, right. I got man show Jimmy. You know what I mean? Yeah. She, she was talking uh, about uh, Jimmy's new wife. She's right. Like, now she's got woke Jimmy, in shape Jimmy, <laughs> cooking all the time Jimmy, family man Jimmy. She oh, walks in a treadmill Jimmy. Right, exactly. Right. Uh, but she was the host last night for him, and she had some funny thoughts on that. Welcome to Jimmy Kimmel Live. I am your guest host, Sarah Silverman. I am the first person to ever cover a shift for their ex on national television. <laughs> According to the 2020 census, for the first time in history, the number of white people in the U.S. is on the decline. This has got to be a scary time for racists and Applebee's. <laughs> Which is kind of interesting, like, that she's hosting. So good for, yeah, that. Good yeah. for him to be like, you know what? 
Like you could host. Sure. And of all the, the late night talk shows, instead of going into reruns, I like the fact that he has guest host on. That was the way Carson used to do it back in the day. That's yep. the way everybody did yeah. it. Yeah. So I, I appreciate the fact that, uh, I mean, I watched a lot of David Spade, and I thought he was great. Yeah. He did a great job. Plus, I mean, like it's Jimmy Kimmel's show. Now, Sarah Silverman could be good at it. Spade obviously had a show. He's yeah. good at it. But I'm with you. Like, over the course of, like, a month and a half, it's not true to be like, oh, I forgot about Jimmy Kimmel. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, Joan Rivers always filled in for Carson, but it was always Carson's show. Sure. Without a doubt. And for whatever reason, most things, if they're a rerun, I don't care. If I watch a tape delay version of the Mariners the next day, I don't care. I didn't see it. But for whatever reason, as soon as I see something on a late night talk show that I recognize is dated. Yeah, it's hard to get there. It, I'm like, oh, it's a rerun. And for some reason, I, I, I change the channel. But just just, becomes, just in that format. But like 99% the of, of the jokes are about that day. Exactly. Right? So right. you'll hear the first joke and you're like, what are they doing? That happened in April. And you're like, ah, yeah, I'm yeah, out. Yeah, right, yeah, same right. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think, too, it's just different because that was such the standard to have a guest host. Like, yeah, have a guest host coming. Mm -hmm. Why not? Right. It's not like people don't have stuff to promote in the summer. And it helped launch the careers of a lot of people. Not that they didn't already have status at that point because they wouldn't be on The Tonight Show, but David Brenner and Joan Rivers and all those people who sat in, you know what I mean? It was, they, were, they were great. Yeah, there's some famous story with Joan Rivers and Carson. I don't know if she cracked a joke or something. I don't know. Then it was like, you're never coming back. Oh, good. Uh, yeah, I've heard. So. I don't know what it was, but right. Like, so Jimmy Fallon had on Billy Crystal. If, you don't, if you're younger, you don't know who Billy Crystal is. Billy and Crystal, if you're like me, you don't watch it. Billy Crystal was a funny comedian and then did a lot of movies. I still find him funny. But he was on last night over Zoom or whatever. He wasn't in studio with Jimmy and explained why. Billy, I'm so happy. Thank you so much for, for, for being here. Well, I, I wish I actually was there yeah that's true you know, but uh, you know times you might there i'm a little afraid to fly oh yeah so, yeah no, not about the covid the passengers <laughs> <laughs> i actually called for reservation jimmy and they asked me if i'd like to sit in the octagon <laughs> so, yeah exactly you know, there's right. a three knockdown rule now in first class i don't know if you know that <laughs> yeah, <it's, laughs> hey, last time i flew in the flight attendant asked if i wanted headphones and duct tape <laughs> They stopped serving alcohol. Now they serve Ambien. <laughs> oh, my God. Here's the last one. New slogan is, there's something special in the air. There you yeah. go. M -M -A. How you doing? I like when I, Billy Crystal used to do uh, Fernando on Saturday Night Live. That was, that was way back in the SNL. Yeah, exactly. Like, you look marvelous. Yeah, it's yeah. better to look good than... And Billy Crystal's obviously not super old, but that old school way of, like, Don Rickles, just the jokes yeah. I've... Joke, like, joke, joke, for everybody. Joke. I... I like it. I, I think it's the stupidest, mm -hmm. like, easiest way to kind of giggle yeah. at it. If Jimmy Fallon would stop laughing, I, I would like it better. It, he does laugh. Gilbert, well, I can't Gilbert, say Gilbert anything. I laugh a lot. I, I meet people all the time. Like, damn, what's so funny on the show? I'm like, well, that's funny. <laughs> right? Like, people yeah. laugh. Uh, let's see. Jeopardy has announced two permanent hosts. Uh, one of the, yeah, hosts. There's going to be two of them. Uh, the, the main host will be executive producer Mike Richards. He wants to make sure you're not calling him Michael Richards. Oh, right, right, right. People, yeah. really, people really liked him when he did his little stint there. He was all right. He'll do the regular nightly syndicated show. Yes, yeah, like, look, I get it. A lot of people wanted LeVar Burton. He grew up with him and stuff. Some people thought this was like insider trading because he was he's already been a producer on the show and mm -hmm. everything. But even he said, he's like, look, I didn't have any influence over it. They picked me. Plus, also... This is just one of those moments, and I get it, but we're kind of overthinking this one. Again, it's not like Trebek was a massive star. Like, you don't need to bring in a massive star. It's Jeopardy. And a couple months from now, you're just going to want somebody that does hosting Jeopardy well. Yeah, and you know it's worked I mean? before with Conan. I mean, obviously, he had a hell of a run, but you didn't know who he was a writer. You didn't know who he was. It wasn't like some big name. But even with to. Conan, I'm saying, that's still, he's doing like a show, like, at the end of the day, like you're hosting Jeopardy, you don't need a ton of right. other stuff. You got to tell what the answers or the questions are. You know what I mean? So I'm just like, I, people seem really. I, I don't use the term butt hurt, but they seem salty. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what? It's okay. It's the host of Jeopardy. You're, you're gonna forget two months from now. Right. So he'll be the everyday host, and then uh, Maya Balak, Bialik, I believe. Bialik, uh, Blossom. Right. Just say Blossom. It helps. Yeah. She's on Big Bang Theory now. I know. Yeah, but we know her from Blossom. I know, but we don't want to sound old. Oh, okay. and we are old. We know her from Big Bang Theory. There you go. <laughs> but the old people know her from Blossom. <laughs> uh, 
She's going to host primetime specials, including the uh, National College Championship. Oh, good. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, good. You have two hosts. Hey, I mean, look, fine. Mike's going to get some time off. So this seems like a positive thing for this Mike fella. Sure. And good for her. Yeah. And, and you're right. In, in two months, no one's going to care. Right, that's kind of my thing. Is like, I, I know it's a massive deal, and we're so used to Trebek. It was a sad story. We watched sure. the poor man, you know, kind of, kind of slowly, pa- you know, die on us. <laughs> it sounds horrible. It's all about you, Ted. Yeah, Trebek so, died on you. Yeah, but in the last few years, right? Like, we learned some things about his personal life, and we were like, oh, we like this guy. So now I feel like everybody. A lot of this is just talk, chatter on social media. Sure. Just have like this emotional response, like. Oh, I can't be a producer that's already working on the show. It's got to be this or that. It's like, calm down. Like, Why? The main part of Jeopardy is you have fun guessing answers. And being wrong so often. You're not going to make everybody happy. Right, no, exactly. Not now, not today in this world. And that's why like bars have trivia nights. They don't have Jeopardy nights because it would be a lot of wrong answers. Like Trivia can be tough as the rounds go on, mm-hmm. but I still feel like it's... A lot easier than Jeopardy. Yeah, it's not. Tri- yes. Jeopardy's like trivial pursuit of the, uh, you know, what I mean, TV game shows. As far as the board game goes, uh, it's deeper than that. Yeah. Man. Well, brown piece of pie on Trivial Pursuit. Okay, it that, is that, like the takes, brown category. That's is that science? An hour and a half. Right? No, that is the arts and literature. It's one that I just. You know, so think, it's like you know an what, 18th make, century, this French author who, who's married, like, dude, I don't, you can stop asking. I don't know. Well, we always talk about this, right? Like, what are our favorite weeks on Jeopardy? Uh, teen week and college week. Thank you. Okay. Right? Because it's, 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 it's a little bit more uh, accessible as far as the answers go. So what, I mean, I'm just thinking out loud here. But like, Trivial Pursuit, can we get like a teen version? Not filled with teen facts, but just easier. Yeah. Yeah. Trivial Pursuit is not that hard. It's just the brown piece. Mm-hmm. Well, they, they do, do have, like, else. They they do have like nine, ten different extra versions if you want to go. I guess they do have a lot of versions, right? Because they came out with like the 90s yeah. version. And this I and sucked that. at the... They've got like yeah. the celebrity, you know, whatever version of it for Hollywood. They've got a bunch of different ones. Sports. I, I, right, so that's just, my main thing. It's basically like you take the pie and every pie is like baseball, hockey, football. You know what I mean? You just change it for the, but it's all sports. So yeah, I got to, if I'm going to play Trivial Pursuit, which I haven't done in years, I got to do recruiting. I got to feel out my friends, see what the strong suit is. Like, I think me and you would be good. History and sports, I have us really covered. Right. Literature, science, not my strong suit. I'll get you on science, bud. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, so I mean, that could be a good one. Yeah. Entertainment, we're probably about equal. I yeah. will say this I will use you on my Pictionary team every time. Yeah. Every time. I'm telling you, man, within two seconds, like Captain Caveman, you name it, we got mm-hmm. it. You guys do track on that. <laughs> You're cheating. I'm like, how do you think we are cheating? You're staring at us. We played the game. I drew a thing, you guessed it. Then he drew a thing, and I guessed it. That's how the game works. Maybe we're just good at it. Yeah. Uh, I did finally watch Hard Knocks. I can't stand the Cowboys. Never liked them, this and that. So this season, usually you kind of like some of the teams. And, like, I don't have any personal beef with Dak or Zeke. Sure, sure. And it's cool seeing their friendship. Like, they're wrapping gifts for each other. But they're just on a team that you hate. Right. So it's good. I like the music. It's good to see pads popping, as I say. Let those pads pop. Uh, and, and I still think it's a great series, even though I know it's a little edited and, and done for drama. Sure. But if you like football... It's that time of year. It's still hot out. It's just cool to see guys like like fans them watching them practice. How cool is their? Uh, I mean, it's it's not brand new, but their facility. Uh, they still they still do their training camp in Oxnard, California. Oh, okay. So yeah, all right. Yeah, so they're, they're the Cowboys actually, to their credit, they're one of the teams I still liked it. Like you used to go to camp. Mm-hmm. Right, 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 right. You yeah. know what I mean? Uh, let's see. You're gonna watch something tonight. Shout out to John for sending, hitting me up to this uh, eight season premiere of Brooklyn Nine Nine at eight p.m. But remember, it's on. NBC now. Okay. Ah, Thank you, Ted. We appreciate it. You are listening to The Men's Room. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. $20 $20 million, $19 million, $6 million. These are all awards recovered for clients of Phillips Law Firm. To win big, you have to fight big. And Phillips Law has been fighting the too-big-to-fail insurance industry for decades. Not every case will have a multi-million dollar outcome, but Phillips Law will fight just as hard to recover the outcome you deserve. If you or a loved one has been injured in a car accident or on the job, call or click today at 1-800-JUSTICE or visit justiceforyou.com. 
Geico asks, how would you love a chance to save some money on insurance? Of course you would. And when it comes to great rates on insurance, Geico can help. Like with insurance for your car, truck, motorcycle, boat, and RV. Even help with homeowners or renters coverage. Plus, add an easy-to-use mobile app, available 24-hour roadside assistance, and more, and GEICO is an easy choice. Switch today and see all the ways you could save. It's easy. Simply go to GEICO.com or contact your local agent today. Start summer up by mixing things up with top paint and stain brands at Lowe's. Shop HGTV Home by Sherwin-Williams, Valspar, Cabot to find the perfect pop of color or classic shade you've been looking for. And don't forget to prep your deck for the season with reliable wood stain and sealer. Now's the perfect time to complete your paint or stain project. Lowe's. All things summer, all at the right price. The men's room returns with Miles and Thrill. Now, let's see what's happening in the real world. All right, here we go. A road rage incident gets heated in shoreline when a guy throws an axe at another guy's car. Meanwhile, a woman in Indonesia crashes her ex-boyfriend's weddings. A wedding, and that's when things truly get bizarre. To Canada, where landing a helicopter to get Dairy Queen is not allowed. When you think being a doctor, that will not make your parents proud. And everyone was real close to getting a new pair of alpaca socks, but it's not to be. And it is time for your headlines. Now, it's time to hit the head. Lines. Here's my car. All right, our top story. We go to Canada where the residents of a town in Saskatchewan were shocked to see a helicopter land in the area. Given the record heat and the fact that the helicopter was red, locals in the area assumed that they were uh, there to pick up someone in an emergency. What the pilot did instead was make his way to the nearby Dairy Queen and grab himself an icy treat. Look. Yes, he turned out to be a man in his 30s that lived nearby, and while he was licensed to fly the craft, he'll be cited for his illegal parking spot. Is that really what they're getting him on? Oh, yeah. yeah. I would take that. You bet. Like, if I could pilot a helicopter and I had the money to do all that, like, yeah, I want Dairy Queen on a fly on over. Right, like they were saying, like, you don't want to, you know, it's a lot of debris and stuff, but also, like, it was like a Sunday or something, like, no kids were in the school, like, nobody really got... <laughs> Yeah, I don't, know was, the, I don't know what the rules are. I guess we don't have a circle move. thing. I guess you can't land on it. It was more just being a menace in public than anything. You know, yeah. like, like, like you said, he was blowing dust and dirt all over the par- the, the parking lot and the nearby uh, ball yard and stuff like that. So, oh, yeah. No, I, I get why he got in trouble. I'm just saying I, I'd probably still do it. You bet. That's just, mm-hmm. that's just paying for parking at that point. <laughs> in other news, over in the UK, a woman wrote a sarcastically scathing letter to her local Ikea. She had bought herself a baking tray from her store for a buck and had attempted to use it to make some delicious potato cakes in the oven. Didn't take long for her to realize that she had made a mistake as the tray was not for baking, but was instead a plastic serving tray. (laughs) She wrote a letter to the store admitting her blonde moment and thanking them uh, for making serving trays that looked like baking trays, complete with a photo of the melty mess inside of her oven. And she was also skewered online for that uh, little mishap in the letter. Well, if you're going to send them a letter, like, it's plastic, man. You know? Exactly. And again, maybe we shouldn't assume that you understand plastic and heat in your oven and all that, but, you know. That really is the bugger of it all, is that we can't just assume that people will be smart with things and realize that plastic melts. Because it's not like it feels like a metal baking tray. It exactly. feels like a plastic one. If you ever want to have fun, every time that you, you buy a new product, just look at what the warning label says. Sometimes it's, it's pertinent information. Other times, like... Yes, toaster. I know I should not use this in the bathtub. Right. But that only means someone used it in a bathtub. I shouldn't stick a knife in this while it's on <laughs> and electricity is coursing through it. But hey, you know what? YOLO. Right, that's the thing. I get it. You made a mistake putting it in plastic. But once you right. wrote a letter and, and said, Look what you right. guys did. Mm-hmm. Like, All right. All right. We're going to shut this down. We come back to uh, local, to Shoreline, where a man took road rage to a whole new level. The report goes that the victim of this situation was being honked at by a Jeep driving behind them as they were merging onto the freeway and continued to honk at the victim as they drove down the road. Attempting to avoid confrontation, the victim left the freeway but was passed by the Jeep, who then blocked the road. Dashcam footage then shows the driver getting out of the Jeep and hurling an axe at the victim's car, cracking the windshield before driving over the median to flee. Surveillance footage was used to eventually track down and arrest the assailant. No, it wasn't an axe. It was a pickaxe. Right. Wow. It was a axe axe. It was. And uh, had a bladed edge on one side and basically the back of a hammer on the other side. Yeah, I guess this guy's had a few of those incidents lately. Yeah, yeah he's had a couple run-ins. Yeah. But yeah, I saw that video. I was like, dang, man. I also wouldn't be shocked at all if he embedded that pickaxe into that into that car. Just sure. the thud that it made and the, the shards that were flying all over the place. You could see the big crack in that windshield, but... But to me, this is like Ted was saying about the nipple biting. Right, like, look, people do things, people bite each other, things happen, there's confrontations, and, like, someone gets shot, you're like, man, that's tragic. When, when you throw a pickaxe, you just go like, whoa, man, 
Look, yeah. We have like these agreed upon crazy right. things we'll do, right? You know, but sure. like, yeah, throw a pickaxe at a car. Yeah. You'll block the road, you'll get out and you'll yell at me and you'll pound the hood of my yeah, car. Yeah, and we're going to yeah. get into an argument and maybe even a fist fight. You're going to throw an axe, dude? <laughs> right. That's when there's, there's a hush in the room. Like, dial it down a little bit. Right. Easy now. <laughs> what do you want? Uh, what's a wedding without something going wrong? We go to Indonesia where a man's wedding was crashed by his ex. Uh-huh. Woman, All right. Are you ready for this? The woman stormed in the wedding, but instead of trying to break things up, she confessed that she was unable to get over their relationship. Very romantic story here. She then begged him to marry her as well as his second wife. The arrangement was agreed upon by all three parties, and the wedding continued. Yeah. He married both of them? He married yes, both of them. However, it is <laughs> if you look at the yeah. photo of the quote-unquote Hattopy couple, you can, the thruple, you can tell who was the original wife and who's now tagging along. Yeah, Mike and I are looking at this picture like, well, you think what I'm thinking? Like, she was the ex because right. she's smiling and looks happy. The faces are fuzzed <laughs> out, but he looks yeah. a little concerned at one of them who does not have a happy face on <laughs> at just, all. Yeah. The other one just looks a little bit too ecstatic to be there. <laughs> and that is it for headlines with that. Mike Hawkins out. Thank you, Mike. We appreciate it. We'll see you. We'll have more Men's Room coming up next exclusively on the Odyssey app. Men's Room Happy Hour on the way with Big Dirty Dummy and Noah Sherlock. That's yes, next. indeed. It is all true. So for the next 90 seconds anyway, please do what you do best. And for Aletha's sake, stay beautiful. The men's room has been taped before a live studio audience. Wardrobe and makeup provided by Mantastic Limited. This has been a presentation of the Men's Room Radio Network. Oh, man. A double flush production. <laughs> Portions of the following program have been pre recorded. And now, ladies and gentlemen, tell him up. This is not a test. Tell him up. Your ears do not deceive you. Tell him up. There is no way out. Tell him up. You are here. Tell him up. She fell out of the sky and with the full force of gravity landed on the rock with a hefty thud. Tearing it up on the rock. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. $20 $20 million, $19 million, $6 million. These are all awards recovered for clients of Phillips Law Firm. To win big, you have to fight big. And Phillips Law has been fighting the too-big-to-fail insurance industry for decades. Not every case will have a multi-million dollar outcome, but Phillips Law will fight just as hard to recover the outcome you deserve. If you or a loved one has been injured in a car accident or on the job, call or click today at 1-800-JUSTICE or visit justiceforyou.com. GEICO asks, how would you love a chance to save some money on insurance? Of course you would. And when it comes to great rates on insurance, GEICO can help. Like with insurance for your car, truck, motorcycle, boat, and RV. Even help with homeowners' or renters' coverage. Plus, add an easy-to-use mobile app, available 24-hour roadside assistance, and more, and GEICO is an easy choice. Switch today and see all the ways you could save. It's easy. Simply go to GEICO.com or contact your local agent today.